Hey guys, welcome back. X Rebirth, the officially unofficial Let's Play, episode 22. I'm Enigmius, and today we're going to war. It's been decided, it's done. But before we can go to war, we have to finish our station. It's just... I don't make the rules, that's just how it worked out. You remember we started this in the last episode. We brought our construction vessel here, we decided what spot we wanted to build it in, we gave our architect the orders, and then we transferred all the materials to the construction vessel and said, hey, someday we'll have a station of our own. And it looks like that someday is fasting, fasting, fast approaching. It didn't actually take that long. I was expecting it to take much longer than it did. And also I was very curious as to what we would be, what we would be able to do with this first module of the station. Now it turns out directly ahead there, you can see we've got an ore refinery. So we can take ore in its raw state and convert it to refined metal, apparently, which is very cool. And beyond that, I don't think it does a whole lot. We've got storage. We've got more storage. We've got the conveyor belts and all the things necessary for the ore refinery. And we've got stuff connecting them all together. So we're not in bad shape. It's actually going to be a functional station once we get it up and running. And you can see here, this windowed area directly in front of us is actually where the ingots that we make are crated. They're poured into ingot casts and crated for transport, which is kind of neat. And then over here, you can see we've got the fires that melt down the ore. They're still, <laughs> the fire is still under construction. We've also got the conveyor belts with the ore on them that uh, aren't moving because it's not done yet. The station's not done yet. It's not supposed to be working yet. Uh, and the ore is not real. According to the inventory of the station, once it was done, we actually had zero ore, uh, so I'm assuming that those are chunks of meat for the drone barbecue celebrating completion of the first module. But that brought us to a point where I kind of had to make a decision, and that was knowing that we were going to have to add another module onto the station in order to satisfy the campaign and progress with that, and I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go through that whole process all over again of feeding one freighter after another through the construction vessel one at a time. Very time consuming. I don't mind micromanaging. I don't mind issuing individual commands, but not over that much time. Everything looks good. Now we need to get it operational and start churning our produce. So it's kind of neat neat little cinematic thing just kind of looking around at the station from a certain point of view and now it's telling us that we need to hire a manager and a specialist which is good advice but it's not necessary for the campaign so I've just kind of ignored that for now Hi, uh, this is our architect Any of the modules listed here would enhance your station greatly. and now we just have to select the URV wharf from the list of options and tell her how many guns and force field projectors and all that other stuff we want to include in the construction process and it'll be just like building the first module. Now a lot of people have said that they didn't know that they had to build the URV wharf because they weren't told, which is not entirely true. There's nothing in the mission log that says now build a URV wharf, but there was dialogue with Nakano and Yisha where it was explained that they were going to need a lot of drones for this upcoming war with PMC and we were in an ideal position to provide them, so that's what we were setting ourselves up to do. Now, it's not ideal. People are used to looking for mission log cues to determine what to do next, but the, the information was there. We're, we're going to roll with it. You could see already the individual chunks starting to go into place and bouncing off the station and making a mess. Still no movement on the conveyor belts. The fires are out. Uh, which is fine, because again, we don't have any ore on there, we don't have anyone issuing instructions to the workers. It's cool. Now, materials. Like I say, I did that bit with the first module, feeding the freighters through one at a time, and realized that it, it's just, it takes too long. You give instructions to one freighter, you have to wait until it's done. And then once it's done, you give instructions to the next freighter, you have to wait till it's done do that four or five times, it's a huge chunk of time where you haven't actually done a lot and you're kind of restricted in terms of where you can go 
Because Harvest you need to be in the zone to issue the orders with the construction vessel to transfer the material from one freighter to the ship. And you can see here I've got a titarel full of energy cells. This is the energy cells that I bought from the station in Fervid Corona so that I can make room for the Space Happy Meals. And apparently there's a demand on the station for these, so I decided why not? Anytime I can free up some space on the titarel, uh, that's a good thing. But realistically speaking, when it came to something like this in the plot, where we're adding another section to a station that I'm not even planning on using right away, that's not going to be profitable right away, that's going to take quite a bit of time to set up, and that would involve a process that just really is going to be very time-consuming and not all that interesting... I'm sure Egosoft is working on the necessary steps so that we'll be able to queue commands between our ships and our stations and our ships and other ships like construction vessels. So that's cool. I'm not too worried about it, but in the short term, in the interest of honesty, I edited the save file to put all of the materials that I needed onto the construction vessel so that it could continue with the construction process. And this is actually a little time lapse of the... URV wharf being built. It's four times the normal speed. I just kind of sat in space for a while and uh, observed without moving what was going on. It's not a very flashy process, but again, for my own personal interest, I was kind of curious as to how long it would take in order to build this thing so that we could get on with the campaign. I was afraid hours. Again, I was honestly, because I couldn't remember how long we'd been working on the first module. If this one is going to take roughly the same amount of time. We could have been in trouble, but it was actually, from start to finish, 25 minutes or less. Yes, I did actually just shoot a missile at my own station. That was a mistake. Fortunately, it didn't register as doing any damage, or I would have felt really, really stupid. Everything's fine. Now you can see, I just kind of hung around for a little while longer. With the production up and running, we should be able to pump out drones in no time. Nakano's making a fleet-wide broadcast. This is Nakano. The time has come for us to come together and push forward. Each wing has been given a task to perform in the coming battle. Our allies in Albion will also push towards the jump gate and will meet us for the assault on the Plutarch station. Now take up your designated formations and prepare for departure. Smaller ships will move out first and meet up with the capital ships after they have jumped. Fortune be with you. I told you we were going to war. Huh. We'll be right where the action is. Entering Crimson Rocks. Encyclopedia entry. Uprising against the Plutarch Mining Corporation. Update. Throughout the war, Torn Albion and Defree Systems, fleets have massed. PMC, hit by uprisings and defections of key personnel, has forced what may be a decisive encounter. Article is being updated in real time. All right, it's war time. One, keep your form and continue for the station. Our ships will jump in any time. They'd better. They see us coming. We have to get in fast and strike. What is We're that? We're engaging the Plutarch forces in Albion. We'll keep you up to date. Uh oh. <laughs> Are those, uh, are those friendly, please? Because that would be neat. Uh, if some of those were friendly, we've got the right gun equipped. Um. I guess we're heading this way. Look at all of our Rons all lined up there, nice and pretty. So we've got some fighters. We've got that thing. What the hell is that thing? Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> There's a Tyrannus over there. 
Uh, we've locked onto its matter antimatter drive, apparently. I want to know what this big thing is. If it's a station or if it's. Oh, is that the. Huh. That was from my station. That was our Titerel delivering the energy cells. I think it's because either uh, no drones to move them back and forth or no manager on the station. But it doesn't matter because that's trade and this is war. I think this is Overwatch. I think this is the station that Plutarch set up to blockade the gate. Uh, so we shouldn't be chasing after it too aggressively right now. Oh, look, we got things we can shoot at. It's fighters, which are uh, always fun. And out here, I don't have to listen to your stations bleeding at me about unacceptable behavior. I just blow you up. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it, except somebody's shooting at me from behind, and that's not very nice. Even though that's exactly what I'm doing to these fighters. Double standards are cool. Uh, la la la. Someone shooting. Is that... It's it's not giving us the uh, the target boxes for those guys. Oh, here's some stuff we can blow up. There's that guy. I think these might be drones. The Iran's drones. That are doing a, a fairly respectable job on uh, anti-fighter duty. I should be careful not to blow them up. Because they might be helping me at some point as well. I notice none of the fighters are really dropping any kind of fun loots. I'm hearing all kinds of weapons fire and it makes me extremely nervous, but it's all friendly. It's all friendly weapons fire, which is so exciting to see for really the first time ever. Actually, it's not the first time ever, it just feels that way. Because we've been in PMC space for so long and we're the only outlaws there. Uh, look at that. Of course, the Iran, which has more guns than anything else, isn't really doing a whole lot of shooting. <laughs> we got another one, and another one. So we've got three Irans with drones for support. Look at all these guys flying around here. Shoals and shoals of drones, um, and the Irans aren't doing anything. <laughs> Oh, Borman, you are such a tool. Nevertheless, oh, now it's actually telling us that doing something with this Tyrannus is uh, part of our mission. I think it was saying that before, but we got sidetracked by fighters. Ah, oh, Jesus. Look at this. He's got a fighter escort. One, two, looks like about a half a dozen fighters. Oh, no, he's got more than that. He's got eight fighters uh, patrolling around uh, plus himself and he's not shooting yet I think is he close enough to shoot no I think he's just out of range so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do our best to actually make use of some of these missiles that we've been carrying around <laughs> watch the missiles go into the highway and the next thing we know, we're just seeing random explosions along the tube. Uh... Space shotgun, do your work. I don't think those missiles really did a whole heck of a lot. Oh, we're, we're taking missile hits. Which is not horrible, we're okay, we've got fairly substantially upgraded shields but it's it's like I was saying in the last time we got into trouble with the swarms of fighters we're so used to just you know picking things off one at a time that we get swarmed and all of a sudden it's like uh, I'm, I'm in serious trouble here 
My console is exploding. We've got warning things going off. And uh, if we don't do something, we're going to die. So that's... We, we have to do a better job of keeping an eye on our shields and uh, adjusting our tactics. Now, I th think we're doing fairly well. We just got hit by another missile. But we're doing a fairly reasonable job of not flying into the thick of things and just eating all kinds of weapons fire from all angles because we're dumb. And we are taking hits. Except it's it's not very easy to figure out where they're coming from because we've got all kinds of debris and other distracting things around us. Oh, look at this. The Tyrannus versus the Iran. That should be a fairly one-sided sort of thing, I think. When you get right down to it. Oh, what was that? Yeah, that was another missile. See, now, at least this way. See, they're so skinny, they're hard to see. Especially when they don't give us... There we go. Ooh. That should deal with him. Oh, we got another guy shooting our butt. As long as it's not actually spawning new fighters in groups, eventually we will run out of fighters to kill and we can go after the Tyrannus without having to worry about missiles and extra shots uh, firing us. Uh, firing us? What? Firing up our exhaust pipe. It's not giving me the targeting thing, so I don't even know if this guy is friendly or or what the dealio is. So we're just going to ignore him for now. We'll go after this guy because we do know, based on the red box, that uh, he's a dick. See? Just like that. Alright, we're going to kind of keep an eye on this because... This could be just, look at, it's a pair of Irons against this Tyrannus, and the only ones fighting are the drones. What a waste of a kick-ass ship, you filthy bastards. Maybe they're just mad because I hired away all of their defense officers. So even though we aren't getting the uh, targeting box, uh, we, we've pretty much confirmed that this guy is in fact shooting at us. Uh, so, targeting box or not, we're gonna get rid of him. And apparently he dropped some cargo. And uh, apparently we're taking hits again. Why? I wanna go after the Tyrannus. Oh, here we go. What's... Oh, we got free missiles. There we go. Free missiles. How many? Four Sunstalkers. We'll take them. Now, Tyrannus. You big dumb babby. Look at these guys. They're just dancing around each other. He's got drones going after him. These are Rons, I tell you. Three of them. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I, I kind of understand from gameplay sort of perspective why it wouldn't make sense to have the Irans just come in and lay waste to uh, everything ever but at the same time like come on give me a show there's such a great opportunity here for streams of weapons fire going back and forth between the two we just uh, overheated our inertial uh, hammer this space shotgun, so we switch to the plasma cannon and we'll just kind of overheat them in turn uh, until we're finished blowing this guy up. So, oh, look at all the debris coming off his back end. Uh, oh, yes, the drone launch pad. That's actually an exceptional idea. Oh, shut up, Nakano. Although, I do want to see what ship he's flying. If he's in... <laughs> I could just see. He's in some stupid little freighter. Oh, I would be... Foreman, don't overcommit. We can fight our way to you. We're taking defensive positions. We'll try to push closer to the gate once we clear this wave. <laughs> oh, Borman. What a poor bastard you are. We got... 
drones all over. There's a part of me that wants to board this Tyrannus because he seems to be about as interested in firing his guns as anyone else. Uh, but then I'd have to crew it and Overwatch is right there. It would probably start shooting at it as soon as I took possession. I feel like it would be just kind of a waste, so we'll just blow it up instead. Uh, what else does it want us to blow up? More turrets? We can blow up turrets! There we go, la 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 la. More turrets. Plasma cannons. Blowing up the plasma cannons. Uh, what do we got over here? Is there more turrets? Is it something on the back end? While we're here. They're moving to protect the Plutarch ships. Foreman, we have Reaver ships bearing down on us here. Can Reavers? Not now. More Plutarch ships have just arrived. We're losing people here. Can you hold them off? People are being picked off. We have no choice but to retreat. Isha? He's right, sir. I don't think we can hold for long. Understood. Give the order and have them fall back. What about you? We've enough firepower to keep Plutarch at bay for a while. But they really don't want us through that gate. And I'm not leaving Albion. Not yet. I'll have the fleet make a jump to a secure area. Otani, give the order and lead the way. More drones have shown up, and we're getting ready to jump. We'll try to make contact shortly. Borman out. Good luck, Falk. This is uh, Otani. We're falling back to the Canteran sector. Watch each other's backs. Does that mean we don't get to blow up the Tyrannus? Aww. We were doing such a good job of it, too. What, are, uh, what, what, what was his hull at? When we finally gave up, it was at... Uh, oh, 76%. All right. Following orders. Are those drones in the highway? Yes. Every once in a while you'll find drones in the highway. I find it kind of amusing. Uh, there's some fighters in there as well. Some people maybe not find it so much amusing. Encyclopedia entry. Uprising against the Plutarch Mining Corporation. Update. The battle for the Albion de Freescate solidified Plutarch's control in both systems. With Heart of Albion and the Republic of Conterra in retreat, many of their supporters have been forced into hiding. Ready. I thought we were ready. 